Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome to the On The Burst podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, I'm your coach, Brandon Savage, and I'm joined by my assistant coach, An American the, DJ, the rapper of Detroit, Timmy Moody. How are you, Timmy? Yeah, man, I'm... I, All good I was trying boat. to say something really, really gangster, but I'm just, I'm not straight enough for it. Have you heard what's going on with P. Diddy at the moment? Yeah, it's sort of posted everywhere that he's obviously the Didwa. I like that. <laughs> oh, is that what he is? Yeah, it's like the Riddler. You know, like the 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 cartoon character, the Riddler. Yeah, the the the, the Didwa, the Fiddler. Like he's Fiddler. Yeah. So I actually didn't know the complete story of what was going on, but I I figured there was some something bit seedy going People on. People with too much money just getting a little bit oh. like. <laughs> the Nickelodeon stuff. Have you seen that? Like no. Drake and Josh. You, do you remember Drake? Drake and Josh. So Drake, who was, um, he was like the hot boy. I've heard of it, but I don't know what yeah, it is. Yeah, he was like the hot boy. All the all the teenage girls loved him, and he, he pl- had like this band, and it was this show called Drake and Josh. He was on the Amanda Show and stuff. Anyway, he came out and said he pretty much got molested by like the the producer of the show multiple times. Uh, Hopefully, he, nothing like that happens on our show, n- mate. Just. N- <laughs> Just do what you know now. No. I'll, I'll speak up. <laughs> <laughs> if, you get, if you get any ideas, I'll be speaking up. Yeah, you, you better go to HR because mm. um, <laughs> HR will deal with it properly. I am HR. <laughs> um, how was your weekend? Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I went and watched the Timmy fight and I was really excited for him. I really wanted him to win that. And um, obviously, it just wasn't his day, wasn't luck, wasn't in his favor, having his head split by an elbow that was just dangling in his face because that's where they were it was just unfortunate but um yeah also got out it was just like a nice a really nice time to just take you know four days off and not feel like you've got things to do and you don't have to make the very most of each and every day because there's only two days you can sort of just sleep in and sort of get your feet up and eat some easter eggs and i got the got the dog out from, um the park and he likes to kick the footy so we got, went and did that we don't get to do that enough so that was good I like that. I did quite quite similar. I didn't watch the fight. I'm not, not really into the fighting. I've seen all the ads everywhere, and I'm just like, put the footy on. I don't want to. I don't give a fuck about. Tim Hoping Zou. there's a fight in the footy. Oh, I don't <laughs> give a fuck about Tim Zhu. Um, I actually watched this movie on the weekend called Greenland. It's number one on Netflix at the moment, and it's about. It's got like Gerard Butler in it, which one tick. Um, and he. He pretty much was, uh, he's like a guy and he got an invite to a shelter because there was these asteroids coming to Earth and it was going to extinct Earth pretty much. And it did. And it was a journey of them trying to get to the bunker because a lot of all this shit happened. And it was a really good watch. Um, I haven't really watched TV in a long time just because Yeah, of all the a, I haven't watched a movie or yeah. a show in so uh, like four years, but I don't think. Or maybe I have the occasional, but I just can't remember it. I had a pretty big day, but I, I was I had some late um, some late like coffee or, or something. I forget what I had. Um, so I was up. I was watching the movie. Couple pingers. No, oh, c- just a couple. <laughs> what were they? I don't know. And uh, th- this Easter looked a lot different for me because um, it, it was very sp- split up with like having my daughter and stuff. So um, I was married. I'm not married anymore. Well, I am married technically still, mm. but me and my wife split up. Yep. Yeah, which um for those OG listeners, you might have you might have actually gone through the journey where I was getting married and all mm-hmm. that stuff. So we gone through the big whirlwind of all that sort of stuff and um yeah, it was a, it was a very split weekend. I spent a lot of time with my daughter and the mother got her mother her mother got to spend a lot of time with her as well. It was it was really good. It was actually really good. We got to spend a lot of time with her. I think we're all exhausted though. Yeah. Um so it was very good. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, top five moments of the week are uh, brought to you by Picklebet. Uh, we're going to go. We're not going to do the uh, the blind rankings. We're just going to talk through it. So I've got number five, Dylan Edwards kicking the ball for himself and scoring. Yeah, against, mad. Um, Where he did the little step on, did the 360 step on turbo. That was mad. It, it looked really good. And I think with Dylan Edwards, he... Um, Without Cleary, you kind of think they're going to struggle, but he steps up, doesn't he? Well, in the tipping last week, you know, both of us neither tipped him, and I'm a staunch Panthers fan, and I just was trying to be realistic. I thought that the Roosters were looking pretty red hot, and this if they were going to beat us, this was their oh, best yeah. chance to do it without Fisher-Harris and without Cleary there. So 
really, really rest- restored any doubt that every all the a- external people are putting on the Panthers, saying, no, they can't do it. They've lost these people and they've lost these people and everyone else is looking so much more. So it makes me feel good, you know. That's why I'm wearing my gear this week, I guess. <laughs> well, we, w- we were going to have a bit of a jersey thing because uh, Panthers playing Manly, but... Um, you, you forgot your jersey, and I thought I still wanted to wear mine. So I thought that might be symbolic of Manly not turning up. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I even pumped uh, my footy because it was getting flat in there, and I thought yeah. I don't want that to be like, like <laughs> showing. Uh, number four is the Blake Braley try. Uh, went down the sideline with Sione Katoa, kicked the ball in for Blake Braley. Was it Sione Katoa? I don't know. I I'm don't, just trying to remember. I don't it. quite remember it, but. Blake Braley scored the try. It was a great try. Lots of ball movement. I love all the ball movement. Uh, number three is the James Schiller try. Lots of ball movement there from the Canberra Raiders. I like when I see ball movement from them because they're a team full yeah. of play- not superstars. So Through when, the middle when they sort move of team, the ball, it's like very offloady. And a guy like James Schiller running onto it, he d- did really well to do that. Number two is Tom Trebojevic's try assist for Teleto Kula. Mm. Uh, he pretty very much, nice. it looked like he was... All but held up. Five of him on him. And he just popped the ball out. And I thought it was way too easy. And I was like, okay, what's happening? Is he dropped mm. the ball? Was uh, he held? <laughs> yeah. But he just popped the ball was around. Was it a knock on? <laughs> he popped the ball around the side yeah. and it was very nice. And the, the number ones one, were to come, weren't they? Yeah, the number one moment of the week. How can we go past the Tom Deard and tackle on Selwyn Cobo? Mm. Lazy effort from Selwyn. I don't think he was that lazy, but. I think he was still pedaling. Yeah, I think he was – like Tom Dearden was winning all the fitness trials early in the preseason. Mm. And I think this is uh, – we're speaking in another chat about it. Tom Dearden does all the 1% stuff right. Mm. And I think that all that sort of stuff in the preseason leads to moments like that. The thing I love about watching it was like the whole time, is he going to get it? <laughs> yeah. Trying to work out the triangular thing. And then just sort of at the last minute, Dearden had to, sort of does a semi-goose step. He and just gets a little bit of extra speed. He just sort of finds this little boom more. And then, boom, it was so good. And as a little guy, I used to like pride myself on, you know, I was a hook. I used to like pride myself on defence in my under-12 under sort of days. Mm. Nothing really exciting. But I used to always try and work back as a bit of a, especially in touch footy, as like a... Just, just at the back to try and make those chases. I used to get in trouble off the coaches and stuff saying stay in the line. But I used to always try like to... I always still love the cover defence moments. They just feel so... Uh. Speaking of cover defence and Tom Dearden, uh, he gets my burster of the week. Ooh. Just because of that play. Yeah, solid, solid. I, oh, geez, I, <laughs> it always comes up on you every week, doesn't it? I've normally got a burst, but this one's I've had because I've had it, other. It's been a tricky week. week. Um, I think Lockie Galvin is a good shout. Uh, I think he was close to getting it, but I think because of that play, Tom Dearden gets it for me. Yeah, I, I can't disagree. I'm just trying to find someone else who I think that sort of was extra gritty this week than what they normally extra are. Extra gritty. But yeah, let's lock Dido in. Yeah, we'll lock Dido in. Unanimous decision there. He's the first one to get double double points. We usually try and go different. But Maybe we should give it to Nick A. Hines then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on to our tips. Shout out to Picklebed. Using the code Turbo when signing up, that lets them know you're coming from us. And they'll take good care of you. They'll give you good specials. They've got good multi-markets for the NRL. Um But make sure to know what you're really gambling with. For free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Melbourne Storm versus Brisbane Broncos. I'm going the Melbourne Storm at $1.50. I need to mention first, you've taken over me in the tipping. You're on 17 points. I'm on 15. Nice. Mm, Jesus. I hate... Do you mind if I come back and lock this one in last? Yes. Yep. Uh, I'm just sit with it. Bulldogs versus the Roosters. I'm going the Roosters at a dollar twenty-three. Yep, Roosters. The, oh, my computer is absolutely shitting itself right now. I think something's going on with the pickle better. All right, moving on to the Roosters versus the Bulldogs. The Roosters dollar twenty-nine. Bulldogs three sixty-three. I'm going the Roosters, but I, I think I'll go um, Bulldogs with the line of ten and a half at a dollar eighty-five as well. Uh, I like the Roosters. I'm not going to muck around with the line on this one. Yep. The Knights versus the Dragons. The Dragons performed last week, but I'm going the Knights at dollar forty-three. Yep, Knights. The Rabbitohs versus the Warriors. The Warriors at a dollar eighty-one. The Rabbitohs at two dollars four. Oh, gone the favourites once again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going the Wars. I'm just sort of I'm an about the last one, but I will stick with the Knights. I think the Dragons could 
could be close, though. I'm going to stick with Knights. Yep. Uh, Penrith versus the Manly Seagulls. Penrith are at $1.60 and the Seagulls at $2.40. I'm going upset here, Manly at home. Go on the Panthers. That'll be a nice little challenge. Dolphins versus Tigers. Dolphins are $1.59. Tigers are at two thirty seven. This is a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Titans just based on the Galvin out factor. I think that throws a little bit. The the Dolphins? I'm going to pick the Dolphins, yeah, just because yeah. of Galvin being yep. out. Yeah, I also agree with that. The Cowboys versus the Titans. The Cowboys are $1.15. The Titans are at $5.30. I'm going the Cowboys, surely. Go, I'm going a little bit of something. something. No, no, I'm going, to, I'm, going, no, I'm going the Cowboys here. And the Raiders versus the Eels. Raiders are $1.71 versus the Eels at two fifteen. I feel like I don't want to be that guy that's chipping the favorites every week, but Moses out is a big loss. I'm going the Raiders. Mm, yeah, it's a tough one. This is a tough one. Uh, it's a really tough one. See, because I just think that Parra lacked that. They needed a half back. They just had two five eights in the field last week, and that was clear. And that's where I think Penrith had that upper hand of we lost our gun half back, but we replaced it with a a half back, and he just did his job and kicked, you know, kicked well. Um, I'm going to go Parra though. I think they mm-hmm. need the win. Um, they do. Yeah. Mel- Melbourne Broncos. Back to that. Well, yeah, I'm going to go Melbourne just because of the excitement of the players back. I like it. Well, let's move on to Timmy's tangent. Really struggled this week. There was a few little, you know, you know, rocks out and about, but I was looking for a diamond. I just don't know that I found the diamond, but I'm going to go with uh, Matty Burton. He had 20 seconds to go. They were oh. four down. The kicking kid, or I don't know, let's not blame him. There was probably other higher up things that were going on that – um, should have made that happen, but yeah. Uh, I was, so I just thought that was awkward. Kicking the ball from the ground. Kicking, he almost got it too. He, like. he almost got, it was a much better kick than the Zach Lomax one, to be honest. And I think we can go back to the worst kicks of all time. Mm. Uh, I think of Kieran Foran's kick under the post. I also think of the one from Origin. Uh, it was a long time ago. It was a toe punt from about 30 to 40 out. And he just didn't hit it at all. It went yeah. like one meter along the ground. I'm only going off like things I've remember seeing on the footy show and stuff back mm. in the day. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple of good um, mud ones back in the day you yeah. know, where people have like kicked and it's good. just they missed the ball pretty much. It's gone a meter or something. But I think yeah. that's the one I'm talking about as well. There's also that um, the fame, there's a couple of camera monster ones. Uh, it, I love when players miss and, Missed by far. Was it Cam Smith who fell on his ass? Yeah, yeah, that goal? was a good one. That was good. That, that was, was a nice only one. Cam Smith had sort of have the class to sort of be able to pull that off. I like that one. Okay, moving on to the next little game. It we did it last week. It went absolutely nuts on TikTok. Forty thousand views on TikTok. What and, was the game again? Uh, it was name a better player then. Oh yeah. Um, Shout and out to Cars Patrol, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Cars Patrol. I actually shouted them out on the Instagram and the sure, TikTok. I've noticed that. It yep. did well on Instagram as well because uh, they came up with the idea. But name a better player than Reese Walsh. Oh, Clink- okay. Uh, uh, sorry. And better than Reese Walsh. Sorry. Don't talk until I say a better player than Reese Walsh. Clint Gutherson. Ryan Pappenhausen. Jareen Buller, Latrell Mitchell, Dylan Edwards, Tom Trebojevic, James Tedesco, Kalen Ponga. Yeah, I'll go Ponga. I think. Oh, if, thank God, because he was the last yeah, on my list. I, I was actually going to say, let's just not say anything, because I think Walsh is my... My favourite. Oh, he's very exciting. He just the speed, the the steps. He like it, it's crazy, bro. Like it's it's next next. There's nothing to compare with it except for Ponga. They're kind of like pretty similar. Like just they're almost the same dude. And I just think Ponga's that little bit a little bit better. 
but I think Walsh will surpass him. His game is a little bit more well-rounded, but at this point of his career, I think Reece Walsh felt, well, can has I just a say, lot. It feels really bad saying letting players like Tedesco and, and stuff. I'm sort of going currently, like just currently, like not of all time. Like if I'm going all time, like I would have said a lot of people before Walsh. It's kind of hard to kind of judge that type of thing because realistically, if you, what's the question? Who's had a better career? Because mm. if that's the question, yeah, James Tedesco, fair enough. But mm. if you're playing a game tomorrow, who do you want? Do you really yeah. want James Tedesco in your side? Yeah. Yes, he's playing. He's playing well at the moment. I don't know if I do. But <laughs> yeah. you probably prefer Reese Walsh over him because he's much quicker and a much scarier. Not tomorrow because he's still got that busted thing and he looks. He's, still yeah. got like, oh, yeah. he's wearing a headgear underneath his headgear or something yep. that looks like they've done up. But yeah, I, th- I even think just like if you were to trajectory, I just imagine him being. A lot better. Yeah. Like Billy Slater-ish esque. Like, yeah. na- like we remember him as like that big. But I guess we're gonna remember all these fullbacks that big to be fair. Yeah, for they're sure. All, they're all pretty elite. All right. Uh birthday game last week. You got seven points, so I have to beat it. Throw it at me. I haven't done any research, by the way. I'm just um like it's so in my head at the moment, just thinking about the you know, the keyboard warriors in the chat going, what does he mean? Tedesco's not better. What about Turbo? But, you know, let them, let them have their clickbait, you know? Oh, the, the Just don't message me personally and ask for my address because you want to, you know, sort it out. I just, no, no, no. There was actually a lot of comments on my pronunciation of Matt Timoko last week. I said Tomoko and I said Tago and then I said Tungo. And then, yeah, oh, it's just they're, kinda... they're tough. Like to get them all on the fly, you know. Like, yeah, well, when I'm, when you, I'm, do you know what? To be fair, like you'd expect these guys that are get, you know, the commentators and stuff. That's their full time job. They're getting paid. They've got time to sit throughout the week and maybe even work on the pronunciations. We got full time jobs outside of this. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a bit hard to. But like, we try to get as many as we can. I just want to say I don't ignore them. But when I'm going quickly, I go to what. You remember like, muscle memory. Like, it's what, like, the way you said it, the way, the way you first learned it. It's yeah, exactly. For a long it. time, I said papali. Mm. And I, I say papali e now. So, like, things are growing Not being on me. being stubborn in, intentionally trying to say a really Aussie bogan version exactly. way I'm, of these, you know, I'm, I'm not names, being stubborn. So we do apologize. But at the same time, like, people with my name, my name's Brandon. People say Brendan all the time. And literally, I don't even correct them because it doesn't matter in my opinion. So... I feel like they should, a lot of these other cultures and other names and stuff, I'm not saying they should suck it up, but I'm saying, I'm saying I don't care that much. I think much. surnames maybe just because it's a family name and you yeah, kind of want that, to hear your family true. name through the television that's, and stuff. That's and do, true, yeah. but I'm not telling him to suck it up or anything. I'm yeah. just saying, because it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter to me. So I'm, I do emphasize on getting him right, but I don't put a hundred percent emphasis on it. All right, birthday game. Birthday game. Okay, let me just bring up my... I need um, to beat seven. Notes. Okay, are you ready, Bart? Yep. Bunty Afoa. 28. A shout out to uh, Anton Poser, Bunty um, Afoa Appreciation Society on Twitter. Um, you said 28. He's 27. So One. Yet. Next guy. Jermaine Salmon, the weak gutter dog. 26. 25. <sighs> uh, Kel Iro. 19. Oh, good, good. So glad I picked one. I thought he was cheeky. He's 24. Oh, no. And do you know why I thought it was even cheekier? Because the commentator goes, oh, this bloke, he's 23. And then I thought, I might use him in my thing because he seems like he's yeah. younger because he hasn't got yep. his go yet, right? But then when I looked up, he's actually 24. So I thought, if you heard he's 23, I'm even going to get you on that one. Oh, no. That was cheeky. So when did you say 19? You lost yep, five. Yep, I'm five great. off. So I can't, I've got to get him all right from now. Um, Jacob Gay Guy. Oh. <laughs> I love the guys I've picked. I love them too. 27. Oh, you've done pretty good there. 28. And do you know what? How do I have not... I knew he was older than what he was because he didn't get his... You know, yep. he's not one of the... He wasn't starred like his brother, but yeah, if I didn't know and just looked at him, I probably would have gone 24. Just, yeah. yeah. So that's cool. Um, and final, the Fog Dog, Jamal Fogarty. 32. He's 30. Far out. So you've got a variance of two, seven, three, eight, 10. Plus ten. five is eight. 10. Yep. 
Ten. All right. Well, that game is a lot harder than you give it credit for. And oh, I feel like I tr- was trying to be tricky, a little tricky. There's two particular. Next week, I'm coming back with past legends. So, okay. so this is where the game's going to get interesting. And then, yeah, and then I have to match with past legends. Yeah. Then it's equal. Then yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So fun, ten, fun. Pl- ten play seven. All right. Anyway, cheers for tuning in.